Hello everyone. I'm Takeaki Ishizawa uh, at the uh, Osaka Metropolitan University. And I'm basically a hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgeon, but I have been associated with the development and the clinical applications of fluorescence guided surgery. So today I'd like to talk to you about this topic. Do you know this architecture? Do you know this? This is a very famous uh, Sagrada Familia, Catedral of Sagrada Familia uh, in the Barcelona in Spain. And on the uh, opposite side of the Sagrada Familia, we can see, we can find this very classic uh, hospital, hospital built in early 19th, 19th, 19th uh, early uh, 20th centuries. Do you know this name? The, this is called uh, the uh, San Pau Hospital. Uh, the very classic hospital. And every time I went to the, this kind of classic hospital, we can find uh, uh, the uh, kind of a grass, grass house in the old hospital. Do you know that this is inside? Inside is re renovated in a modern style, but uh, do you have any ideas the, about the role or uh, role of this room in the hospital? Someone has answer? No? Do you have any idea? This is the operation theater, operation room. What I'd like to say is that we surgeons basically need light to do the very accurate uh, surgery. And recently, we can utilize the uh, light, uh, the, the including the invisible light, to visualize the invisible or hard to detect uh, biological structures. This is the fluorescence concept of fluorescence guided surgery. And uh, the ICG is the main player. Uh, when ICG can emit fluorescence signals when illuminated with near infrared light. And recently, the fluorescence, intraoperative fluorescence imaging using ICG can be used in a, a variety of surgery, surgical procedures, literally from head to toe for the uh, mainly four applications, the assessment of the perfusion, visualization of the anatomy, uh, localization of the tumor, and lymph node or lymphatic system mapping. And in the field of hepatobiliary and pancreatic surgery, we can use ICG fluorescence imaging for cholangiography. Cholangiography means the uh, visualization of the bile ducts and identification of liver tumors, hepatic segmentation, and perfusion assessment. Uh, let's start with the uh, fluorescence cholangiography. I originally developed the fluorescence cholangiography by intrabiliary injection of ICG or intravenous injection of ICG because ICG is excreted into bile 100%. And, uh, and uh, this is the uh, fluorescence cholangiography by intravenous injection of ICG. And I thought that the best indication of the fluorescence cholangiography would be the Lap -core, laparoscopic cholecystectomy. This is a very major uh, operation, surgical procedure. And during the laparoscopic cholecystectomy, you can see the anatomy of the bile duct only by the intravenous injection of ICG. And that would be the world first case of lap core with the use of fluorescence cholangiography. And uh, uh, this is the, uh, then I uh, perform the prospective studies to evaluate the success rate of fluorescence cholangiography in the setting of lab cholera. And uh, this technique has the potential advantages over conventional radiographic cholangiography because the fluorescence cholangiography does, doesn't need cannulation into the biliary system or the X-ray radiation. So this is a great advantage of fluorescence cholangiography. And recently, a lot of consensus papers have become available. And uh, this is a very good news for me and for surgeons in Japan, because the uh, use of ICG for cholangiography was approved by Japanese FDA in March this year. So this is a very good thing. So oh, I, I think that the fluorescence cholangiography will, uh, be, will be um, 
disseminating in, the, in Japan and the other uh, Asian, Asian countries from now on. Now let's move on to the next topic, the identification of liver tumors. One day in 2008, I found that the liver tumor showed very strong fluorescent signals from before uh, intraoperative injection of ICG for chronography. At first, I, I, I couldn't understand the background mechanism of this phenomenon, but after the, the accumulation of similar cases, I started thinking that the ICG that had been injected before surgery for preoperative evaluation of liver function could accumulate in the liver cancer, cancerous tissues because in our department, almost all patients underwent preoperative liver function test by uh, intravenous injection of ICG. So ICG would be accumulated in the cancerous tissues at the time of uh, surgery. This would be the uh, possible background of the identification of liver cancer during surgery. In fact, on the cut surfaces of the resected specimens, uh, we could find that the, the well or moderately differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma tissues shows cancerous fluorescent signals, the fluorescent signals emitted from the inside of the cancer tissue. In contrast, in poorly differentiated hepatocellular carcinoma and in colorectal liver meds, here we can find the ring-like fluorescent signals. The fluorescent signals uh, are well, emitted from the non-cancerous hepatic parenchyma surrounding the tumor. Today, I don't have the enough time for explaining the uh, mechanistic background. But anyway, we can use this phenomenon for the intraoperative intra detection of the liver tumors, irrespective of the fluorescence patterns. And uh, this technique has the potential advantage in that uh, very easy, we only need a preoperative injection of ICG and uh, near infrared light camera during surgery. For example, this, would be, this is the one of the uh, clinical case. And uh, here we can see the main tumor, but uh, there are a lot of intrahepatic metastases surrounding the main tumor. Detection of liver tumor is by fluorescent, ICG fluorescence imaging is very easy and the sensitivity is sufficiently high, especially for the uh, subcapsular, subcapsular tumors. Although this technique has limitations in limited tissue permeability and uh, relatively high false positive rate. But the, especially in the setting of minimally invasive surgery, such as laparoscopic liver resection or robot assisted liver resection, surgeons cannot palpate the liver surfaces for detection of sub subcapsular tumor. So recently, more and more surgeons have become using this technique in the uh, clinical practice. And uh, recently, the surgeons can use the robot device for the liver resection. In the, in the setting robot surgery, the, the surgeon is completely uh, separated from the uh, operation field, so the, uh, I, I couldn't, I can't palpate the liver, tu liver surfaces for identification of liver tumors. So let's see the application of fluorescence imaging in the setting of robot-assisted hepatectomy. Here we can see the tumor. Uh, located in the top of the liver. And uh, this technique can be used for, the, uh, to, for setting the uh, transaction lines on the hepatic surfaces. But the other advantage is that we can use fluorescence imaging uh, repeatedly for the detection, confirmation of the uh, tumor during hepatic, transsexual, uh, hepatic parenchymal transsection for assuring the surgical margins for the, uh, this kind of malignant tumors. This is a uh, right hepatic vein to be preserved. And thanks to the fluorescence imaging, surgeons can confirm the uh, exact location of the tumor. And this is the uh, last stage of this resection. 
the tumor and the uh, uh, major vein to be preserved. And after the division of the, this last vein, the wedge recession can be completed, assuring the uh, sufficient surgical margins. And uh, hepatic segmentation, hepatic segmentation. Uh, the, I'd like to explain the anatomy of the liver. Uh, the, the human liver has the eight hepatic segments from one to eight. And especially for the treatment of the liver cancer, the, it is very important to do the accurate segmentectomy of the liver because the cancer, cancer, tish, cancer cells can spread along the portal system. So the accurate segmentectomy can improve the patient survival. But the, the, as you know, the liver is the, uh, one component. So uh, basically, the surgeons cannot identify the exact boundaries of each hepatic segment. So we need some uh, techniques to identify the uh, boundaries of hepatic segment. And in 2008, Dr. Aoki in Japan published the reported the very important technique the, for the uh, identification of hepatic segmental boundaries by injection of ICG directly into the portal vein in the setting of open liver resection. Here we can see the clear uh, boundaries of the segment six after the injection of ICG into the P6 branch of the portal vein and with the use of fluorescence imaging system. And when I visited in Paris to learn the laparoscopic hepatectomy techniques, uh, we, uh, I developed the fluorescence imaging of the hepatic segment in the setting of laparoscopic surgery uh, under the guidance of Professor Gaillet in Paris. And uh, we reported the, these techniques uh, with the name of positive staining technique and uh, negative staining technique. In positive staining technique, the ICG should be injected directly into the uh, cancer-bearing uh, portal vein uh, of the can cancer-bearing uh, hepatic segment. This is a, a P7 branch tumor-bearing hepatic segment, and the ICG solution is injected into this branch. Then here we can see the uh, good demarcation of the segment seven to be removed, even in the setting of laparoscopic surgery. But the, if the root of the uh, portal pedicle is accessible, easy to access, the negative staining technique is uh, technically easier than the positive staining technique. Let's see the negative staining technique. In this, in this case, the, the P three branch, the portal vein, uh, suffering the, uh, providing the blood to the segment seven is closed with a vascular clip and ICG is injected intravenously. Then here we can see the uh, demarcation of the segment three as a non fluorescing region. That's why we call this technique as a negative staining technique. In this surgery, the, this non fluorescing region should be removed. Do you understand? So this is the segment two to be preserved. And the, the advantage of the fluorescent imaging is that the surgeons can identify the accurate intersegmental planes, not, not only from the hepatic surfaces, but also during the uh, parenchymal transection. Therefore, the landmark hepatic vein, this is the other side of the liver, the segment two and the segment three, and the landmark hepatic vein appears on the hepatic row surfaces. And finally, the, this root of the uh, segment three is divided with a, a stapler device. And the really accurate segmentectomy of the segment three can be completed with the use of fluorescent imaging. The perfusion assessment. Perfusion assessment is really easy technique. We only need the bolus injection of ICG. Let's see a case of the uh, modified uh, DP-CAR procedure. DP-CAR procedure is that the, this is the pancreas 
and the tumor is located here, but uh, invaded to the very important artery here. So during this surgery, the, we have to confirm the blood flow to the liver from this artery GD, called GDA to the liver, and also this blood flow, arterial flow to the uh, stomach. So oh, it's very important to confirm the sufficient arterial supply to the liver and the stomach during surgery. And let's see the video. Uh, this is the state uh, before the division of these arteries. So the, uh, this artery is closed with the vascular clamp at this level and the other artery here. So we have to confirm the blood supply from the GDA to the liver and also the stomach. And let's see the uh, fluorescence imaging. Oh, sorry. Let's see the fluorescence imaging. Then the fluorescence signals are coming, coming from GDA to the liver and also to the stomach. So after the confirmation, surgeons can divide these two arteries uh, very, very safely. This is the state after the uh, modified DP car procedure. And uh, from now on, I'd like to introduce you to you some new techniques uh, in place of ICG, uh, for the especially for the visualization of the adenocarcinoma tissues outside of the liver, and also the uh, detection of the pancreatic juice. Uh, we are developing the new floor for other than ICG. Our uh, technique is based on the fact that the, the Professor Urano's, uh, Urano's fluorophores can emit fluorescent signals after uh, the uh, hydrolyzation by the uh, enzyme. So this is the uh, mechanical action of the, our fluorescent imaging technique. And for example, the, some cancer cells that some, some enzymes are overexpressed in the, on the membrane of the cancer cells. So, and uh, recently, the Professor Urano had a, a, a kind of library of this, uh, fr f this enzyme activatable fluorophore. So, with the use of the library, we can detect the uh, cancer sp specific fluorophore. For example, with the use of this library, we can detect the GPHMRG probe for the uh, visualization of the pancreatic cancer, and also the other fluorophore uh, could be identified uh, for the uh, real time visualization of the bile duct cancer. And let's see the application of this enzyme activatable probe for the visualization of the. Uh, Cholangiocarcinoma in the liver. So here we can see the very strong fluorescent signals after application of this fluorophore. And interesting, interestingly, the postoperative outcomes are quite different among the tumor with the very high fluorescent signals and the low fluorescent signals because the uh, fluorescence intensities. Uh, associated, associated with the enzymatic activities of the cancer tissues. So this is the uh, potential advantage of the use of this enzyme activatable probe. And uh, what is the pancreatic juice imaging? The uh, pancreatic juice is very enzyme active enzyme-active uh, di digestive fluid, and especially during the pancreatic surgery, it's very important to detect and prevent the leakage of pancreatic juice, because the, uh, uh, if the pancreatic juice leak is managed wrongly, the pancreatic juice leakage can develop the very critical post-operative complications, such as the bleeding, and also the very severe infection. So surgeons need to identify the a presence or absence of pancreatic juice during surgery. And this, is, this new proof is activated by the pancreatic chymotrypsin, then show the visible fluorescent signals. 
And for example, this is the peak, peak model of the distal pancreatectomy, and the pancreas is divided with the stapler, vascular stapler, and this new probe is sprayed directly onto the uh, stump of the pancreas. Then here we can see the uh, leak of the uh, pancreatic juice with the use of fluorescence imaging. This technique may en enable surgeons to suture close the uh, pancreatic juice leak during surgery, leading to the reduction of the post-operative complication. And uh, in addition, uh, I devised the new suture device for the prevention of the pancreatic juice leak based on the uh, data of the pancreatic juice leakage uh, by fluorescence imaging. And this punk loop is commercially available recently. So I'd like to develop the new surgical techniques for active prevention of pancreatic leak based on the uh, findings of fluorescence imaging of pancreatic juice leak. This is a uh, vial of the uh, endocyanin glue. Uh, brand name is Diagonal Glue. And uh, the 25 milligram of endocyanin green it was diluted with uh, uh, 10 milliliters of normal saline. So this is the uh, diluted solution of the ICC. And this is the tumor located in the spiral of the tumor. And uh, uh, a part of the tumor can be detected by uh, conventional but. Uh, consisted with the fast cell carcinoma and indeed maybe the intrahepatic metastasis. Okay, the main tumor and the daughter nodules surrounding the main tumor, but the uh, uh, surgical margin is negative for cancer and uh, the margin will be the more than five millimeters. So uh, that's why we could not detect uh, fluorescent signals from the low surface of the liver. Then let's see the uh, fluorescence imaging on the uh, restricted specimen. To summarize my lecture, uh, recently I'm thinking about the uh, future of the fluorescent guided surgery with my pet cat. And uh, I believe that in near future, uh, fluorescence, intraoperative fluorescence imaging will develop into an essential, essential intraoperative navigation tool 
enabling surgeons to do more and more accurate surgery, leading to the improve, improvement of the uh, surgical outcomes. Yes, sir.